Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and realise how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, you're a fucking raccoon. You got him for punishment. Get out my goddamn fucking trash heap. In all seriousness though, if you have come back, uh, I certainly appreciate the, uh, the effort. But I digress, you're here for today's video, and today's video we are taking a look at Magi Dolls. That's right, Magistus, that deck that everyone got kind of hyped for for a little bit and then sort of forgot about pretty much immediately afterwards. Now it's worth noting that this deck is an absolute ton of fun, but really it's not enough on its own. And of course it was always going to be splashed as an engine, and as such we're using it with Shadolls. Now Shadolls give the deck a lot of ability to play through a lot of what the other variants of the deck absolutely cannot do. So for example, some people are playing Magistus with uh, Ligma, or Dogmatica, as some of you may prefer. I know what I like. But the Chanel version certainly does much more. It's not quite as powerful when going first. It's not as resilient when building those crazy boards. But honestly, the Dogmatica version just loses too easily to hand traps. I think that this one has a little bit more ability to play through those kind of interrupts. Now, by no stretch of the imagination is this a super competitive deck. It's a road picker best, but one that can actually be done on a relatively tight budget. And that's something you may prefer to the Dogmatica versions as well. So with that in mind, today's deck is very much what it says on the tin. Nothing super competitive, but it is very budget friendly and an absolute ton of fun to play. Now, if you're watching today's video and you're feeling inspired to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, you should check out the channel sponsors Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link down in the description to their eBay store and you'll net yourself a cheeky discount courtesy of yours truly by using it on there. And it's worth noting that they don't just do Yu-Gi-Oh! singles, they do Pokemon as well. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. So before we get stuck into the deck profile, let me first apologise if there are any crazy noises in the background, particularly if it sounds like a jet engine is taking off, that is possibly my laptop going like the fucking clappers whilst it tries to keep up with all this processing it's trying to do on the fly. Hopefully though we'll be able to edit out any of that background noise for you and hopefully it sounds smooth as fuck and like I'm some sort of professional who actually knows what they're doing. And just to clarify on that point, I absolutely have no fucking idea. So again, for today's deck profile, the idea here is to keep it relatively budget friendly. Of course, there are many cards in here that could be swapped out if you wanted to do so, but we'll get to all of that as and when they come up. So for the actual Magistus part, we're not actually running a huge build in here. This is a relatively small engine and one that just kind of complements our Shadows, and that's the entire intention here. So running triple copies of Riliona, honestly, I think this is the best of the main deck monsters that you could opt for and I think that three is absolutely important of course the fact that it does search cards is incredibly important in this deck and that's exactly why we're running three of it honestly the others though we just run one copy of each they are good utility but that's about where it ends they of course will be helpful for stuff like your should all fusions and that kind of thing for giving you additional options depending on what you need but honestly that is about where it ends as such we're just running these six in the main deck along with a few of the other cards which we'll get to in a moment. In terms of our Shadows themselves, we're running Genius and Void, or I believe it's now got a slightly different name. I should really know this off the top of my head, considering I opened it in my box opening, which I'll put a link on the screen if you haven't seen that already. These two are really, really strong. This, of course, being able to shut off effects of your opponent's monsters. This being able to mill stuff or send stuff to the grave is just fantastic either way. Both really good options depending on exactly what you need, and they'll be out soon at the time of recording of this video. We've got single copy of Beast, drawing cards is nice. Shadol Dragon, of course, being able to pop back row is always a really good option. I think that one though is perfectly fine. You could up this if you feel the need to. Two copies of Squamata works absolutely fine for me. I know some people are partial to running a third copy. I think two is perfectly fine. We've got a single copy of Ariel being able to do Grave Control and recycle some of our resources is a nice touch. Should all Wendy says summon from deck. Should all Hedgehog is one I flip between two and three copies depending on what I'm playing. Honestly though, I think the two has worked out absolutely fine and that's the number that I've gone with here. You could go up to three though again if you wanted to make the room for it. And just a single copy of Falco. Uh, yeah, it's just Falco. We then move on to our hand traps. We've got triple copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring. Honestly, I think that Ash Blossom is pretty much mandatory in most decks. It's certainly the best hand trap in basically every single format in at least some capacity. I think you need to run it at three. That's just my opinion. 
triple copies of Gamma and a single copy of the Garnet himself, Mr. Driver. I think this is, again, super strong at the moment. You absolutely need to play it. You lose to a lot of hand traps with this deck if you're not careful. Uh, so, honestly, again, this just gives you another way to play through it. Now, it is worth noting, as I said before, this is far more able to play through hand traps than some of the other variants. But being able to protect yourself against that is good. And some decks just auto-lose. If you open Ash and a Gamma, you basically just win the duel. So, having options for both of those in here is a great choice. We have double copies of Magistus Invocation. Of course, you can use it for the Magistus Fusion itself, but it can also be used for the Shadol. So keep that in mind. It does have added benefits with that in mind. We have triple copies of Shadol Fusion itself. Shadol Fusion, well, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Let's just leave it at that. Shadol Fusion, incredibly strong. Being able to dump stuff from the deck, really, really good. We've got a single copy of Part of Avarice in here. It's one of those cards that I kind of hate to include, but at the same time, it does come up an awful lot. This is a deck where you can churn through a lot of resources, and being able to recycle those can give you a really good option. Triple copies of El Shadol Fusion. I think this is really strong, particularly in any decks that have a larger number of Shadols. Being able to do this during your opponent's turn is a really nice touch. A lot of the time it can lead to you OTKing them, and for that reason, it's absolutely fantastic. We have a single copy of Call by the Grave in here. Great on the defense, great on the offense, great going first, great going second. Just a great card to have in here. Honestly, if it was a more than one, that's absolutely what we'd be playing it at. This is a card that I've been undecided about whether I want it in the build or not, but it is one that has made it back in depending on the playtesting I've been going through. Honestly, one copy of Triz Magistus has been nice. Just being able to get extra bodies on board is always a good option. Not absolutely perfect, but just something to keep as an option in there if you would like to. Again, if you're looking for some room to create, this is probably the first card that I would consider taking out. Two copies of each of the Shadol traps, the main ones anyway. Of course, I know there's others, but you get the drift here. Honestly, I think this is perfectly fine. Uh, Shadol Schism is just incredibly strong, as you already know, and Reincarnation gives you its own options. Shadol Incarnation, of course, fantastic card, particularly in Shadol Heavy decks. And Shadol Schism is Shadol Schism. I really don't need to expand on that. And that makes up our main deck. Of course, we move on to our extra deck here. What I've tried to do is keep as many of the Magister's cards in here as possible, just for a bit of fun. Again, this isn't a super strong, powerful, crazy-ass deck. So Artemis is in here. Of course, just one copy is absolutely fine. We've got a single copy of the Dragon. We've got a single copy of the Goddess. And we've got a single copy of the Fusion. Each of them can come up as and when you're playing through on occasion. They're good options to have in here. Honestly, nothing too insane. Of course, you can cut them if you want to be a bit more precise about your build. We've got double copies of Construct in here. Construct's just absolutely broken, as we already know. So double copies of that in here, perfectly fine. A single copy of Grista, I think, is absolutely highly underrated in pretty much every Shadol build. I don't see this getting used nearly enough. Honestly, I think you absolutely need to play this. It's so incredibly strong, so incredibly underrated. You should really be playing this card. Double copies of App Cologne. I think having the second one available to you in a more Shadol heavy variant than some of the other decks that have been played out there is a really good option. And then double copies of Window. You could up this to three by cutting something else if you really wanted to, but two is normally enough to finish your opponent off. We've got a single copy of Cross Sheep in here. This is a Shadol heavy deck and therefore a fusion heavy deck. And as such, you want to make advantage of that. A single copy of Selene. This is our easy climb up card. Of course, it's a deck full of spellcasters, so I probably don't need to elaborate more on that. A single copy of Access Code Talker. It's very, very easy to make, particularly through the route of Selene. If you don't have Access Code Talker, of course, you can run stuff like Boros or Dragon instead. This is probably the most expensive card in the deck, to be honest with you, though, and one that you could potentially cut again if you want to do this on a bit more of a budget friendly variant. And we've got a single copy of Psy Frame Lord Omega because we can make it, of course, with the Gamma and Driver package. Again, the deck is nothing too serious, and I've tried to keep it as budget-friendly as possible. In the testing that I've done online, this has been nice and fun to play. Again, nothing too crazy, and there's plenty of cards that could easily be taken out here or sort of moulded, depending on what exactly you like. And that, my friends, is all for today's video. Hopefully by virtue of the fact that you made it this far into the video, you've enjoyed it enough that you've hit subscribe, or at least possibly hated it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. In either case, thank you very much for making it this far into the video. You're one of the small few who actually manage it. Now, it is worth noting that if this is your first time on the channel, this isn't the only kind of content that we do. With the ongoing thing in the world that I'm not going to say without getting demonetized, we obviously are prioritizing deck profiles because they're the easiest thing to knock out and the easiest thing to do without having physical access to the cards. 
But when normal service resumes, we do all kinds of fun stuff. We do combo tutorials. We do face-to-face -face deck profiles, which are way better than this sort of thing. We do live duels. We do we do how to play videos. We do locals vlogs. We do event vlogs. We do all the good stuff that you can expect from Yugo YouTuber and all the bullshit clickbait you can hope for as well. Just kidding. I don't do clickbait most of the time. Once again, though, thank you very much for making it this far into the video. Hopefully you have enjoyed it enough to hit subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.